So hello there, welcome to my channel where I talk about anything recreational and motivation about health and if you might like my videos, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe button for many videos to come. I am Ray again for Recreate Nation and welcome to my channel. So now, in this week, let's talk about the electrolytes. These are the ions that gives our body the function responsible for effective electrical signals to the body. So basically, there are two of which that our technology can track. And I love tracking it, by the way. That is my way of being in the health to your side and to the better side. I know it's tedious and I don't mean to say I stay good and no illness all the time. Well, our body is still susceptible. Anyone is, but you can be sure that if you track your diet and check your macronutrients, you are in good hands. And if you are on the healthier side, you can prevent some of those illnesses and be sure that some of them cannot claim your body. So now let me introduce you to the sodium and potassium. The technology that created our own comfort brought the imbalance between these two electrolytes. If you wonder what I'm talking about, then here it is. So let's talk about potassium. Well, potassium is more commonly found in fruits and greens. And it can be found in cruciferous vegetables as well. That is why if you have high amounts of potassium in your body, it implies that you eat a lot of greens and other healthy foods. You are incorporating more nutrient-dense and we can say appropriate food. Well, on the contrary, we have the sodium. Sodium is more commonly found in street food and fast food. It is also available in snacks and due to the convenience and the technological advancements of what we call as the instant. Sodium has become a major ingredient and sometimes acts as preservative. Due to this, an average person can experience high sodium consumption over potassium, which is wrong. So why did it say it's wrong? Well, sodium has a limit of 2000 milligrams of intake for our body and that is for a single day. Well, check this instant cup noodles in the Philippines. Please see the nutrition facts. Well, I can see is that's a lot. Well, you see, it's just a single serving. As we compute the sodium content of this instant cup noodles, we can see that it has this amount of sodium. Well, if this instant cup is eaten just for a single meal, what will happen if you eat another? for the second meal or if you eat in a fast food after eating this. Well, that doesn't mean that sodium is not required for our nutrition. It is, but in small amounts. According to the REI requirement for meal, we have a 500 milligrams requirement for sodium for 19 to 29 years of age. That is a very low amount. Seeing those potato chips in a foil pack gives me a large no, 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 but many people can. They cannot break the urge to eat those chips. So anyways, why is sodium bad in large amounts? One is that water follows where the sodium is. Have you noticed that when you eat a lot of chips, is the sudden urge. There is the sudden urge to drink more water. And that's how sodium increases the water intake and whereby increasing the volume of your blood. In turn, the heart experiences more work on the blood circulation or contractions. Thus, your blood pressure increases. And you heard it right, sodium creates heart problems. Next are your kidneys. When you eat a lot of sodium, excess sodium is pumped out of the body. And which way did they pass through? You're right, the kidneys. The high amounts of sodium deposits and holding those call of natures plus the large water intake, calcium plus sodium deposits to the organ creates what we call as stones. That is the danger of kidney stones. And also according to a study that I link in the description down below, the high amount of sodium can cause a lot of calcium to be excreted to the urine. Thus, if calcium is excreted and you have 
a low amount of calcium in your body, it results to osteoporosis. So, so much for the negative impact. So make sure that your sodium intake are more or less near the RENI requirement. And you must reach the right potassium intake. So also if you eat potassium, potassium is also necessary to lower the sodium intake. That is why it is really the right requirement. The potassium is higher than sodium always. But we overlook it. Why is that? Because we hate greens. Come on, even a child eats their broccoli now. The right potassium amount is 4,700 milligrams and by the RENI, the minimum amount is 2,000 milligrams per day. So that would be for a single day, you need a potassium amount of 2,000 milligrams to 4,700 milligrams. The best would be the high amount because you need to flush away this excess sodium. So even if I said this, a lot of children and adults suffer from potassium deficiency. Please, I'm begging you. I'm now begging you, remake your body. So potassium creates the balance, reduces hypertension and heart diseases. Therefore, we need to focus more on potassium. Why is that? Because salt is already abundant in many foods. Potassium is not. A healthy diet, even a balanced diet one, requires a good amount of potassium. So greens are the ones which are concentrated more of potassium amount. So to help you in your journey, let me give you a list of foods that are high amount in potassium. I won't give you the high sodium foods. Please don't ask me that. Probably you're overdosed already and you don't know. Avoid that chips too. So potassium, here it is. So well, if you may ask me, what are my ratios for sodium to a potassium? Well, basically, I reach a ratio of 0.17 to 0.4 sodium to potassium ratio. I seldom reapproach the one because that is really a bad thing. That is from a record of my current diet, a balanced diet from September 14 to September 29. And don't forget to have weekly exercise or even daily. That greatly helps in your potassium sodium balance. So anyways, I didn't talk about how the potassium and sodium affect your body. Well, the sodium potassium are the ones responsible for carrying the energy to your cells. It's what they call as the sodium potassium pump. This sodium potassium pump is what you need for your body to function well, energy to flow to your cell, and to have a good feeling in your day. So if you experience some dizziness, if you experience some, um, what you call this as, mental fogginess, that is sometimes because your potassium intake is very low and your sodium is very high. So that is how you can change your diet from a sodium base to a potassium base. And with all that said and done, this is all for this video and be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And if you want more videos and be notified, please hit the notification bell in the subscribe button. I upload weekly and don't forget to eat better, track better, and be better. This is Ray for Recreate Nation and I am signing off. See you next week.